Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. I spend more time working at my MacBook Pro than sleeping. And because I spend so much time interacting with my computer, how I behave during those interactions is crucial for my productivity. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that I've done to set up my MacBook Pro for focused work. Let's get started. So I work on my MacBook Pro about six to 10 hours per day. So even if I optimize my efficiency by just 10%, that's gonna make a huge difference every day. This video will be divided into sections here. Feel free to skip ahead if you want, but for now, let's just get started. So let's start with the desktop. So if you look here, I don't have anything on my desktop. There's nothing to distract me here on the screen. The only things that land on the desktop are screenshots that I'm taking, and then I move them to the appropriate folder. Now, if you have your desktop filled with all these things and you wanna have instead a clean desktop, what you can do is create a folder, call it archive or even maybe desktop and move everything that is on your desktop into that folder and then move that folder into your documents. And now whenever you start your computer, there's nothing in there to distract you. Very easy win, very simple to do. Then let's talk about the dock. You will notice that you don't see the dock on my screen. And that's because I decided to hide it. Now you can do this by clicking here and then turning hiding off. So for example, if I click here, now you'll see the dock at all times. But I don't like this because all the icons are screaming at me. So I like to hide the dock and it's also very small. You can just click here and then expand or downsize. So I don't like a really big dock because again, I'm not using most of these apps. The way that I open apps is actually through Offer. Offer is sort of a better spotlight. So I hit command and then I can simply type on the app that I wanna open. So for example, Notion. So I don't use the dock to open the apps. And because of that, I don't need to have all these apps on the dock. I've seen other people using thousands of apps in the dock. That simply doesn't work for me because I get a little bit OCD. So what I have here are all the apps that I use the most. So that's Chrome, Notion, VLC, Calendar, and then the notes. And then everything else is not here on the dock. So again, I'll open everything with offer. And then finally, I like to have the downloads here. For example, now it's empty because then I can use it to drag stuff to other places. So very handy to put that. So the point that I want to make here is for me, having more options on the dock is not better. I just keep the very few essential apps. And so if you want to remove any app from your dock, you can simply go here, for example, on the calendar options and then remove from dock. And that will remove that app from the dock. Now, if you want to put that back on, you can go into applications, then go into calendar and then just simply drag it to the dock. And then if you want to move it to the dock, you can just open the app here and then just click again, options, keep in dock and you'll go here maybe I even move where it was. So that's about the dock. Now let's talk about workspaces. Now, one of the greatest things on a MacBook is that you can use workspaces. To go into workspaces, I just slide four fingers up and I see all the desktops that I have. Now I don't use desktops extensively, but one of the ways that I'm using it is if I have different tasks and then I stop midway through a task, I'll just move it to a desktop so I can finish later. And that really helps me because now I'm on a different desktop. I'm just focused on a specific single task. And then when I complete, I can close that and go into the next desktop. So it's really easy to just move things around in all the desktop windows that you have. So I guess for me, the biggest benefit of the workspaces, the different desktops, is that it allows me to single task on any open window. So if I'm uploading a new video and I still have a lot of stuff to do, maybe change the description or the thumbnail, but I need to get started on another task or I need to break for lunch, then I can simply save it into a specific desktop and come back to it later without losing anything and without seeing all of that open on the desktop that I'm working at that moment. Then the next thing to talk about is the menu bar that you see on the top. Now the menu bar is static when it comes with the computer, but if you go actually go into dock and menu bar and you can actually click to automatically hide and show the menu bar. So here, if I click that, it will show the menu bar at all times. But again, there are so many icons here on the top, VLC, Loom, OBS, Alfred, so many things happening and even the date and the time that are so distracting to me and I don't like seeing that. So you can just simply click there, automatically hide and show and it will disappear. And then when you open a new app, let's say Google Chrome, and if you go a little bit up, it will show the menu bar. This is one of those things that it's a little bit weird at first, but once you get used to it, you just get a lot more real estate on your monitor. Yes, it's just a simple small bar that sits at the top, but if it's not doing anything useful, if you're not using it, it's just distracting and it's taking space on your screen, why not just remove it? And now I have this monitor, this is a big monitor, but before when I just work on my MacBook, it's not such a big screen. So any space that I can save just gives me a little bit more on that monitor. Next, let's talk about the browser. I prefer using Chrome as my browser. Chrome is a very good browser. It's a powerhouse, but it also offers a lot of distractions. And one of the most annoying things that happens to me is opening so many tabs. So when I'm using Chrome and I have lots of tabs open, I try to remind myself to close a specific tab when I'm done with it. So that's one way that I try to stop the tab overload. And then the second way is just using the desktops again. If many of the tabs relate to a specific task, I'll just put them in a specific window and then move them to a different desktop. Then another thing that I really like to use is an extension to stay focused. And the name of it is actually stay focused. So I can go into my extensions and then click there. 
go into the details, and then I can choose the time that I want to block specific websites. So for example, let's say I'm doing some focus work and I don't want to be distracted by YouTube. I can simply click here, block this entire website, time remaining. Okay, done, success. And now if I try to reload it, it won't let me. And one of the really great things about Stay Focus is the nuclear options. By going into this option, you select the amount of time that you want and the websites that you want to block. For example, let's say I wanted to block Facebook and then we block those websites for that specific time. And it really won't allow you to access them. So for example, if I try to log into Facebook here, it will show me a page. Shouldn't you be working? Very judgy, but also effective. Then what I like to do is also hide the bookmarks bar. So for example, if I'm on YouTube, you'll see here that I don't have the bookmarks bar. Again, lots of things taking real estate on your screen and also icons distracting you from the work you should be doing. In Chrome, you can hide the bookmarks bar by hitting Command Shift B and that will show the bookmarks bar. Hit it again and it will hide the bar. And the great thing about this, if you create a new tab, it will show the bookmarks bar at the top. Now, this is very convenient because now you're opening something else and maybe you need your bookmarks. But when you're navigating on a specific website, you really don't need to see it. Then the other thing about that bar is I don't like to have a lot of icons on it. So if you'll see here, I have three spreadsheets, personal work and blog, then I have Rome, then my Google Drive, which are quick links of things that I need. For example, ConvertKit, Podia, Gumroad, Accessing to Medium. Backlog is everything that I think will be nice to check and then I can save it with Instapaper. And then for the time being, I have something on Rome Zettelkasten because that's something I've been working on. So if I come across something interesting, we'll come here. If I like it, I need to save it again, Instapaper, and then eventually to Rome. So yeah, just five links. And you'll see here that the links don't even have names. The three first ones, because they're all spreadsheets, I kind of need the name. But then for Rome, I actually don't need to see the name. So I just need to see the icon. Same for Google Drive. And then just three folders, the links that I need quick access to, something that I need to check on my backlog to read, and then a specific project that I'm working at the moment. So actually, there's never a lot going on in my bookmarks bar. Right, let's now talk about focus work. So the first thing that I like to do is use dark mode. The first thing is that dark mode is a lot easier on your eyes. And when you're doing work in your computer six, seven, 10 hours a day, anything that you can ease the strain on your eyes, just simply do it. If you want to use dark mode, you can go into system preferences, and then you'll see general, click that. And then you'll see the appearance, so you'll see dark. And the great thing about MacBook is if you're using other apps, you will assume the system preferences that you have. So for example, if I go into Notion here, you'll see that it's in dark mode as well. And most of the apps nowadays have dark mode enabled. And so I use dark mode in my computer and also in my phone. The other thing really important is to remove notifications and bells. When you install apps, they're gonna ask for permissions of so many notifications. And those are very distracting when you're working because now there's a bell in the top corner or something happening in your screen that is distracting from doing the actual work you should be doing. To remove notifications, all you need to go is is go into system preferences again, search for notifications, you'll see it here, and then you can start to remove all the notifications that you don't need. And you'll see here that I've disabled most of the notifications for almost all the apps. One thing that I like is to have the calls because I never have my phone next to me. So whenever I have a call, there's a notification, I can simply grab my phone. But for all the other apps, badges, alerts, and sounds are just gonna be a constant source of distraction. The only other thing that I keep are calendar notifications because they remind me of tasks that I'm supposed to be doing at a certain time. And why is that? Because I've hit the menu bar, I don't actually see the time. And my phone is also not next to me. So it's nice to get that notification and say, you know what, it's actually 5 p.m., you should do this because I've lost a little bit of track of time. And that is intentional on my part. I don't need to know the exact hours and minutes at all times. But if there's a specific task, like a call that needs to happen at a specific time, then I'll get a notification telling me, okay, in 15 minutes, you have that call. Right, let's now talk about Windows. Now, I use an app called Spectacle. Spectacle is a Windows resizer, which gives you keyboard commands that you can use to resize Windows. So for example, if I open Chrome here and I'm just gonna open Rome and I'm writing something in my Rome and then I have an article that I'm writing, I can simply hit Control Option Command Left and that will go to the left. And then they'll be seeing the Rome on the right side and the left side, I'll be seeing the article. Now, this is very helpful because I do a lot of writing in my day and I need to see two windows at the same time, one on the left, one on the right. And Spectacle makes this really easy by just using your keyboard. And now I don't need to use the mouse or the trackpad to move things around. But if I'm just using one window, what I actually like to do is to work in full screen mode. And a good example of this is writing in Google Docs. Google Docs is great for writing, but also offers a lot of distractions. So at the top, we'll see all this file, edit, view, insert, all these things. I don't need that if I'm just writing at this moment. So what I like to do is just go into full screen mode here, hide that bar and just simply go into writing. And I use the trick of working in full screen mode when I just need one app for the task that I'm doing. So what's nice about that, it's gonna cover your entire screen no distractions available. Now you just have to do the work that's in front of you. Finally, let's talk about the mouse and the keyboard. Now, one of the simple things that you can do right now is increase the speed of your mouse. The way to do this on a Mac is go into system preferences, then into mouse, and you'll see here mouse. And then you can increase the tracking speed to the fastest available. You can do that here. The scrolling speed as well, and the double click speed. 
Actually, I have this crawling speed not a lot, so I'm gonna do a lot faster. Now, in the beginning, this is gonna feel a little bit weird because now your mouse is moving a lot faster than before. But here's the reality. With more practice, with just a few days of practice, you'll develop the muscle memory that you need to work with your mouse at the fastest speed possible. Again, it's a very simple change that you can make that's gonna make you maybe five, 10% faster working at your computer. So that's changing the definitions of the mouse. If you want to be even more productive with the mouse, what you can do is get one of these. This is the MX Master 3. Now, the great thing about this mouse is that it's two buttons here on the side that one goes forward and one goes backwards. So for example, let's give it an example here. If I'm opening a website here, if I go into Facebook, for example, and then I wanna go back, I can simply click that and it will go back on the page. Now, because I do a lot of navigating in Google Chrome, just those two buttons alone make a world of difference to me. And there are many other things that you can do with this mouse. So for example, if you click on the wheel here, it will open a new page. And there's even this button here that goes to the last app that you use. Now it doesn't have to be this mouse, but just buying a mouse, even a simpler one, is gonna increase your efficiency working at the computer. But even better than increasing your efficiency while using the mouse is not having to use the mouse at all. And the way that you do that is by learning a key keyboard shortcuts. So for example, on Chrome, there's like, if you use Command T, you open a new tab. And if you use Command W, it will close that tab. If you use Command Shift T, you will open the last closed tab. There are hundreds of keyboard shortcuts for Chrome. I just know those three. Those are the commands that I need. And so what I mean with this example is if you learn just the keyboard shortcuts that you're gonna need the majority of the time, you're golden. And you can do this for any app that you want. Simply Google keyboard shortcuts for Slack, keyboard shortcuts for Notion, keyboard shortcuts for Roam, and learn the key commands that you're gonna need. Again, not all the commands, just the commands that you're gonna use the most. And if you wanna navigate faster on the computer, you can do that as well. For example, Command Tab, and you can navigate through all the apps that you need, is one of the most basic commands. And yet, a lot of people don't know it. And now because you're doing this, you're not wasting time going into your mouse to change apps or to open different things. Bottom line, learn some keyboard shortcuts. Finally, let's talk about navigation on the Mac. My favorite app for navigation is Alfred. Alfred is actually a better Spotlight alternative. So Spotlight by itself, it's pretty great, but Alfred really levels up the game in terms of navigating on your MacBook. So you can do the basic things. So for example, if you wanna use Spotify, you can just click and open Spotify, but it also does a lot of other amazing things. For example, search within folders. You simply do an apostrophe and then insert the name of the folder that you want. For example, YouTube and that will open the specific folder where I have all my YouTube videos. And then it will also do simple actions that you normally use the mouse. So for example, if I wanna empty the trash, you can just do that. If I wanna put my computer to sleep, I can simply type sleep and it will put my computer to sleep. Or if you wanna restart, the same thing. And if you wanna even level up your experience with Alfred, they have workflows. So for example, if I type movie and then I say platoon, it's just simply gonna open Rotten Tomatoes, IMDB and YouTube for that specific movie. So now I can see if I wanna watch that movie based on reviews. And you can power up your experience even more by searching for workflows that you need specifically for your work and for your life. And Alfred is really the only app that you need to navigate your MacBook so much faster. Now, the only thing that you need to remember is if you're creating folders, give it names that you're gonna remember because then you're gonna search within Alfred. So now don't remember the path of where their folder is, but the exact name of that folder or at least a few words that are on that folder. So for example, if I search here zero to done, it will open the folder for my course. And that's all the tips and techniques that I use to work faster at my MacBook Pro. If you love this video, you'll love my next one where I talk about all the productivity apps that are on my MacBook Pro. You can watch this video right here. So go watch it right now and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.